Take six. Take six. <laughs> Hi, ho, people. Doing the intro for a big deep dive this weekend with Mr. Woodby. Uh, diving on the Megan Cat with the Megan Cat crew. Um, you got to say, if you're in this crew, you're going to get a lot of opportunities to dive. These people spent 10 days flying halfway around the world to take a vacation, to dive every day, to fly back on Friday, get up Saturday morning at 5 in the morning to go diving again. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, just because you're doing four dives a day and <laughs> doesn't mean you can get enough diving. He was ready to pull the trigger on something. Even with Hurricane Henry. 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 I'm saying that wrong. Whatever it was. Well, we're still mean, going by North Carolina. Henri. 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 That's right. Thanks so for the tip H there. Henry Singletary, if, if you were uh, French, we'd be calling you. Henri. Henri. I think we're going to call you Henri from yeah. now. Henri. But deep dive day yesterday. Shot the box. Shot. Filled the box up full of fish. 150 feet. Um, personal best for me, so it was awesome. Deep diving. Hopefully yeah. do some more of it this year, but enjoy the video. Had a potential one fish that could have been a world record caught on uh, hook and line. It was an amazing day. Oh, yeah. We had a, we had a blast, man. Uh, you know, I, I cannot tell you how tired <laughs> and sore I am right now. <laughs> so you better enjoy this video. <laughs> CC, you missed it, buddy. You blew it. That's right. <laughs> that fish could have been Blew yours, it. Man. It could have been your fish. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So the video is starting with me in the water simply because uh, when combs rolled in, his mast strap broke. So I had to wait for him to get reset, get another mask, and uh, get back in the water. So I'm just out here, sitting out here waiting in the current, waiting for him to show back up. There's definitely current! So we're on Grumpy Turtle. Uh, we dove this ledge last year, if you watch the video, and last year there were fish on both sides of it, but kind of depending on which way the current's coming from, you never know which side the, the fish are going to be on. So we're on the higher side in this case, uh, and the difference is about, I don't know, five, five feet or so, the difference between the high side and the low side on this ridge. So there's really nothing over here except for a couple of small hogs, which we tried to shoot. You can see here that my profile, uh, we come down to about 143 or 4 feet, something like that, and then I drop down uh, to about 153 um, later in the dive, which you'll see here in just a second. So that kind of shows you what we did. And you can see my breathing rate, which is a line in purple, goes up dramatically when I drop down on that deeper section at 153 feet. Well, just hang out for a second, and you're going to see why that is. So I'm about to turn to Combs and tell him it's time to go because we really hadn't done anything at this point. And we're about, I don't know, 10, 11 minutes into the dive right here. And we're just sitting here burning deco for no reason. But I turn around and lo and behold, he just shot a copia. So uh, I was going to go give him a hand until I looked over and saw a rough back over there with about 10 or 12, 15, who knows how many copias swimming along with it. So I take off or take out my... Um, uh, 223 power head stick it on here because I'm at 153 feet I don't have time to uh, to mess around with shooting a, a big cobia and fighting it for forever so that's why I wanted to use my power head so I took the time to put that on there and then when I tried to leave to get off the bottom my scooter got wrapped up in this algae so it's just one thing after another man and that's the way it goes when you know during a downward spiral event and we have a lot of those going on from here on out you see him over there struggling with this cobia wrapped up. So, and that's just, that's where it started at. And it just gets worse from here. Uh, but check it out. So I'm not diving with Trimix right here. And so my thinking's a little fuzzy, just FYI. So I'm over here trying to think about which one I want to shoot and, and drop off the anchor so I can free myself up because I'm towing it uh, with me right now with my scooter. And I actually end up wrapping myself in it. So I spend a considerable amount of time trying to unwrap myself, which I'll edit out here. Oh, 
So after finally getting myself unentangled, I tried to go over and give Combs a hand and show him where his fish was because I could see it was hung up on that ledge underneath him and he couldn't. Um, but unfortunately, I got there just in time to watch it uh, pull off and swim off. So I was hot right there because this 223 power head, this is like the third time I've tried to use it. Just bought the stupid thing, right? And it did not go off. And I am hot, man. This is the whole reason I got this thing. So I have to fight a cobia at 153 feet. I'm going to have to do it. Because uh, it's swimming around with a power head sticking out of its head. A live one, no doubt. So, uh, anyway. Watch this. So this is how you actually bend not one, but two shafts at the same time. So both these shafts are bent like pretzels after this dive. It turned out to be an expensive cobia for me. So by the time we wrap all that stuff up, uh, it's time to go. Uh, in fact, we're probably about a minute or so over. And it, I sent Combs on up uh, so he can be on his way up. And I needed to sort it out my little uh, my little area. Got stringers and floats and stuff everywhere, uh, and get the buoy ready to come up. And then as we're coming up, I realized, ah, well, man, this thing might grab on that ledge. So I kind of wanted to hang out for a second and and hop it up over that ledge when it got closer. And it's a good thing I did too, because if I hadn't done that uh, and spent a, another minute or so down uh, and not go up the line, I wouldn't have seen this little goody sitting down here on the bottom uh, that you'll see here in just a second uh, because if I had uh, Combs would have been without his precious new scooter and I had to put this in here because I want to I want to spend a good amount of time reminding him that would be is the cleanup man that's right cleaning up his trash on the bottom man look at that uh, thanks would be for Picking up my scooter and bringing it back up for me. So let's look at that dive profile one more time. So you see that our planned bottom time was 20 minutes uh, with a contingency of 25. And we started up uh, right, right after 20 minutes, like right at 21. Uh, and, and you can see here, you look at the line and see I'm going up. Um, and you know going up before my contingency but that's why you plan it that way you got the planned uh, ascent time and then you're oh crap something happened you got to be off the bottom time uh, of, in this case it was 25 minutes uh, and so I made it shy of that but that's why you plan your dive and dive your plan so 
Fred and Rob actually ended up diving further down the ledge. They didn't do a whole lot to die on that dive set some ocean triggers and maybe one guy, I can't remember. But later on in the dive, they did see our friend, the roughback. Um, so he covered quite a bit of ground, the old roughback did, uh, with all his companions. So um, we already had Kobe on the boat, just one per day. So neither Fred nor Rob actually shot one. But you can see how big this roughback was in this video that Rob made. This thing is a beast of a sing ray. They always are. Um, that's And that's... Anytime you see one, like 95% of the time if you see one, it's going to have Kobe on it. So I always look for those big rays on pretty much any ledge I dive. So if I hadn't shot the Kobe on the first dive, we probably would not have done very much at all except for a little hog. So we decided to move to another spot. So the spot we went to is called T-Ledge because that's what we call it. It's T-Ledge number two. So anyway, there's so many bait fish on this thing that there's a bunch of big gags right in the middle of that bait and you can't even see them there's so much bait on there we have a really hard time actually hunting on this ledge not to mention the fact that it's gotten cloudy and overcast to, over top and there's not a whole lot of sunlight coming down so everything kind of is dark and and blurry with all these bait fish but you look right there i'm trust me there's a bunch of big gags and I end up not being able to track or keep my eye on any of them just because of all the motion going on. But I do see that little uh, a little sand uh, plume come up right there. So I know one went, one of them at least went under that rock. So that's why I went down in there. So I really didn't intend on trying to get any lobster because diving deeper, uh, I don't care about lobster and get to the shallower. But when it comes to you this easy, man, you just can't turn that down. You know what I'm saying? You just can't turn that down. So Combs thought I wanted him to try to get that fish. What he doesn't realize there's a there's a grouper underneath this this rock. You can see it right here, right? But it's hard for him to see it where he was coming in from. So uh, he thought I meant to get that lobster. Who cares about lobster, man? Let's get some fish. Uh, so anyway, I was like, he's having trouble seeing it, so I had to help him out a little bit. Oh, 
You see, that actually turned out to be a pretty nice gag. So uh, I'm glad we took the time to get him out of his hole because he was tasty. Tasty. All right, let's get to our main event. Uh, this is Rob and Fred diving what we came to call the Kraken Ledge, as you will soon see why. <laughs> Okay, so now we are essentially above Fred. Uh, Rob was still coming down uh, as Fred was shooting at that gag. This is another gag, um, actually a nice one, in fact, that Rob lines up on and pulls the trigger. No power head, didn't go off. So anyway, that ends up being a wet bullet and that's why that his power head didn't go off there. Very frustrating. He's trying to reload here to try to get a, a shot off on his scamp and, and put it in the bag. Meanwhile, Fred Scamp, that went in that hole, swims out and away. Later, fish. See you later, gator. Maybe next time. So as you can see here, uh, Fred is going nuts. He's having a ball. Uh, Combs and I didn't shoot any scamp, so he is wearing the scamp out. So Fred spends a time running around uh, trying to shoot this big gag that he sees in the distance. But you can see there uh, he had plenty of scamp uh, and a hog, so he's been busy. But even without a side, uh, he comes up on this hole and finds the Kraken, where this ledge gets its name. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> So I'm switching over to Rob's camera here so you get a better idea of how big this fish that Fred shot really was. Look at that thing. That thing is big. It is the Kraken. It is a 40 pound fireback grouper. I mean that thing is awesome man. Awesome. And between the fish that he shot on this dive and what Rob shot uh, they pretty much filled out our uh, boat limit for the day. I thought we were doing fine before that. Man, they just had a gangbuster day. In fact, it was so good, uh, we're going to end up going back to this same spot um, the following weekend. You'll see that video soon. Uh, but we had a great day. And in fact, we actually got back to Carolina Beach before uh, this nasty thunderstorm hit. Uh, we pretty much made the inlet and turned into Rob's dock right before it unloaded. <laughs> 